Van's loaded. It's a Sunday, and we're off on an adventure. Mission somewhere different today. Not on the urn. I'm not going to tell you where I am either. But, catching fish. So, let's see what today brings. It's all going a bit quiet. What was it, Simon? Just a. So that's too big, too decent bream you've had. A few skimmers. It's more uh, cold beer and barbecue weather than fishing weather. But. What's wrong, Cecil? Welcome back to Three Brothers Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Three Brothers Magazine. Ah, well. So, what else would you be doing on Sunday? 20 minutes later. At least everyone's getting bites. On a little uh, still water in the south. I am joined by a few very talented anglers. Simon beside me is catching bream. I've got two hybrids. Well, I think one skimmer and a hybrid and a teeny roach. And Cecil's missing bites. Cecil's road testing his brand new feeder rod. That's only 15 and a half now. Bites or fishing rods? Fishing rods. <laughs> feeder rods. It's a beautiful little place. Hopefully I catch some bream today. Use one of them. It's uh, only 45 gram. It's perfect for the distance I want and to hold the bottom. Feeding dead maggots, corn, hemp, castor and worm. I just started to get bites putting the whole worm on after a quiet spell. The uh, clouds have just went over for a second, so I'm hoping the overcast might get a few more bites. <laughs> for a while there, it was uh, taps off weather. Crown bit mix is brown crumb and Sonia Bates bream with a good squirt of brasm in it. And the wasps seem to like it. They definitely seem to like it. Fuck off. I have eight fish. Two decent skimmers and uh, bits and pieces. I'm enjoying this venue where you just drive up and park behind you. So, saves the old back walk and stuff. Oh, stickers. I'm down to like the last handful, maybe about 15 or 20 of them. 
So that poses the question, do I order more of them? Or do I just sell what I have and say, we've sold what we have? I still can't believe how well that went. I do have a friend that's trying to knock up a hoodie for me. But I think that's a bit... I don't think I'll be selling them. What I would like here is a nice bream bite. Nice slow wrap around with the tip. But the bites that I have been getting are little taps. Places alive at perch fry. There's like loads of shoals of them just swarming around to keeping it. All about an inch and a half to two inches long. Crack in there though. See when you're feeder fishing, it's important to have a marker to cast to. I know I keep telling you this. Pick a marker in the far bank, clip up line so that when you're casting out you're hitting the clip and you hit the, the marker. Directly in front of me is a tree. This tree. This lake that we're on, it's this is the deep end of it, where we're fishing is about 20 to 25 feet. The way you can kind of roughly spot the deeper pit, deeper, deeper venues, deeper locations, is to look at the topography of the ground, the way the hills are. If everywhere is flat, the chances are you're not going to have a deep venue. But if the hills are coming in, like what they are here, then you, what forms naturally, it just forms a big bowl, it'll hold water, it becomes a lake over time the far end of the lake it's nice and shallow you know so that's the shallow end of this place this is the deeper end of this place you can see by the hills around it that they come in quite aggressively so we're fishing somewhere that's a deep hole there are some decent bream in this place you know, people have seen them same to the couple today three to maybe four pound I'm chucking a whole lot of worm and chopped worm in the feeder. Just trying to get something a bit bigger. But it's still good. I'm not sitting on my arse on a Sunday on the couch. Second day on the bank in a row. We're having a second day on the bank. There's some bit left over from yesterday, so I thought, why not? Today we're fishing on a part of the urn that I hope, touching wood, can escape the boat traffic. Let's see what today brings, eh? Give you a wee look at the place. This place is one big, basically it's like a big back eddy. The river turns over there and it's it's uh, up at the minute, it's, it's kind of high. So it's beating its way down to Enniskillen. Now yes, some fish like moving, moving water, other fish kind of don't. Some fish are lazy. So I'm hoping that they'll, they'll have come into this, this back eddy. So I'm going to feed pretty heavy for the first couple of hours, putting the, the bait up feeders. Doing a cast every 90 seconds hopefully. For the first hour to get some bait down. 
and then we'll see what happens after then. But it's a lot better than being sat at the house doing nothing, isn't it? Been fishing half an hour, casting every 90 seconds. I'm uh, gonna take a wee break, have a drink, have a sandwich, and then go at it again for their half hour, nice and hard with the, the bait up feeders. Because I'm fishing at 50 meters here, hitting the clip at 50 meters, there's a bit of a breeze coming that way. You know, you're not going to be 100% pinpoint accurate all the time. That's just not going to happen. You know, the best feeder anglers in the world, if anyone tells you in a crosswind hitting 50 meters that they're fit to drop a feeder, you know, exactly on the same spot every time, they're telling you porky pies. But because you're hitting the clip at 50 meters, you're creating like a, you create like a line of bits of feed. You know, yes, of course, you don't want to cast that way and then cast one that way and then cast one that way. You want to cast in a general direction so that you're creating like a bed of feed that the fish can come across and come across and go. Oh, there's a there's a there's a caster. No, there's a bit of hemp. There's a dead worm. There's a dead maggot. You want to kind of create a bed so that a fish come now the shoals of fish in Ireland, in Northern Ireland, on the urn, they're like a train. They will move through a swim as faster than you will believe. You want to be able to put enough bait on the bottom so that a, a shoal of fish can come across and suddenly put on the brakes and stop for a minute. Now, we're kind of fishing for everything here today. Predominantly bream, hopefully bream, touching wood bream. Uh, but I might expect to get hybrids and roach. Hybrids are weird. You can keep piling in your bait and you can start catching hybrids. And then for some reason they just decide, no, no, I've had enough of here and disappear. And you won't catch one. They'll just disappear. They'll disappear for maybe an hour or the rest of the day. You won't see them. So you kind of want to put enough bait in to keep fish interested, but not enough to kill the spawn. We're at the end of August, the end of August, start of September. The fish should be starting to switch on and go, wait a minute, winters are around the corner, let's pack on the pounds, get a bit bigger so the comes winter, we're not kind of struggling so much. At least that's the plan. Whether it works out or not, it's completely different. I was going to try and fish at the church, which is just further down this road. It's a big uh, historic, uh, it's the Crom Church, Church of Ireland. Uh, but the gates were locked, so there's no way you're going to get through onto the land. There is times where if you speak to the minister, you know, and make a bit of a donation in the, in the church box, he's happy enough to let you go down and fish, as long as you didn't take in the piss and you weren't leaving a mess and, you know. Not on a Sunday though, doesn't let people fish on a Sunday. But I did go down there, but the gate's padlocked, which means that he's, there's no access, so... We just have to make do with here, which isn't so bad. They've not fished here with a feeder for a long time. We're talking 2010, 2009 was the last time I fished here with a feeder. And everywhere I've driven, you know, around the areas that normally would fish, there's either a match on, there's the urn hundred, or there's mental crazy boat traffic because it's bank holiday weekend. So, beggars and all that can't be choosers, so you just have to make do with what you can. So, I keep going, I keep putting the bait in. Basically I'm throwing, I'm throwing these. Now that's a 40 gram, or 45 gram, 40 gram pressed in bait up feeder. My plan is to throw something like this every 90 seconds for at least an hour. That way you're building a bed of particle and a bed of crumb. But sometimes you think, I'm not match fishing, I'm pleasure fishing, so I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna have my sausage sandwich. I'm gonna drink my tin of whatever it is. And I'm gonna talk to you good people. <sighs> How are you? <laughs> Feel free to leave a comment in the box, below, in the, the, the comments area below. 
again, big thumbs up to everybody who uh, bought stickers. I have been contacted since this video, the start of the video, you'll hear me say that, you know, should I buy more or blah blah blah. Well, somebody bought uh, 15 stickers. <laughs> I was like, why? Okay, no worries. So they're in the post this morning. So that's pretty much cleared me out. But I have ordered another uh, batch of 200. So they'll be here soon. So if anyone wants, you know, stickers for your tackle box, for your boat, for your, for your man cave, let me know. We'll get you sorted out. Again, thanks very much for everyone who's liking and subscribing the uh, the videos. Your support means a lot to me. And if you haven't thought about subscribing to the channel, then maybe think about it. Give it a go. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. If you like the videos, share them on your Facebooks and your whatever. Tell your mates. Maybe they'll like them. Or if you're planning a trip to Northern Ireland to fish the Urn or the Republic of Ireland and you want some general info about how to fish here and what sort of tackle to bring then give me a shout. There's always a, there's also a, a Facebook page set up for this channel. Uh, the link's always in the description below. So if you need to chat to me, reach out to me, there's plenty of ways to reach out to me. Anyway, I'm tired of talking now. I'm going to eat my sausage sandwich and drink my can of Monster. One hour later. Top tip time, how to make your maggots buoyant or semi-buoyant or float entirely. Get yourself a bait tub. I like these ones, these are made by Grays. They have like a, a little bit that opens up in the middle, but they're also clipped down, they're really, really secure. When you wet maggots, they'll climb. So you want to have a lid on it that you can close down so the maggots can climb and do their thing, but they can't get out and escape everywhere. What you do, you take your bait tub, you get a good handful of maggots. Predominantly these are only for the hook. You're not going to feed these because obviously they're going to float. So you don't want to put in pints of the stuff unless you're, you know, fishing for fucking days and days. So you need to put a handful in. I mean, there is literally only a handful in there. What I like to do, and this is purely me, I get mainline cell, the syrup stuff, give it a good shake, give it a good lug into there. Now that's just the cell, close the lid, shake your maggots. Your maggots are now covered in cell, or cell goo, whatever you want to call it. This isn't, this isn't by itself enough to make your maggots buoyant. What that'll do is it'll just make them, you know, slimy. So you want to take your water and just give it a, enough water to cover the maggots. We're not wanting to drown them, just enough to cover them. And just now all you do is give it five minutes. The maggots will suck in oxygen because they don't want to drown. And by them sucking in oxygen, they get nice and fat, plus they go buoyant. So if you're fishing with a nice big hook, like I'm fishing with a size 12 animal, comes on animal hook today, because I'm hoping to bag up, maybe I'm being a, a bit preemptive. But what you do, four of them on the hook will make the hook fall nice and slow. So when the fish sucks it in, it should just go straight to the back of the throat and give you a cracking bite. Floating maggots. Cheap, easy, and a great way to fish with your maggots. I've not escaped them, have What's the bet that he revs up just to go over my fishing spot just in time? <laughs> look at look at the arsehole go. People watching this may think I don't like people in cruise boats, 
Not true. There's a certain class. People will have cruise boats and they can be like normal people. They'll stop, they'll say hello, they'll chat, but when you're going past anglers, they slow it down a little bit, give a big thumbs up and say hello to you. Or you get the ones that come past you at 90 miles an hour, chucking out beer bottles, or they'll come to a public jetty that's public, that anyone can use, and decide that this spot right here, right now, despite the fact that there could be fucking miles and miles and miles of jetty they can moor on, is where they're going to moor. And they will basically come crashing in on top of you and then look at you like to say, What? You shouldn't have been there. I'm a boat person. Those are the people that, well, quite frankly, you'd have to give them a kick in the nuts. Just, just a couple, just to kind of level them out. This is a pretty basic thing to do. See, whenever I first arrive into like a, a place that I've not fished for a while, I know the rough sort of depth and everything. You could chuck out a deeper and find out, you know, what sort of depth, what sort of features. When I use the deeper, I'm not using it to find fish. You know, okay, if you put it out and there's a massive shoal of fish, it gives you a bit of confidence. But what I'm looking for specifically is where the drop-offs are, where the features are. Now I'm fishing at 50 meters. I'm actually fishing at 53 meters. I worked it out with the sticks. What I found when, when I was throwing a two ounce lead, if I cast past, see, see dead in front of me is like, we'll call that position 12 o'clock. If I cast at like 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock, then I'm pulling in grass weed. So I know that as I go that direction, there's grass weed. If I cast shorter than 40, 48, 49 meters, I'm into grass weed here because the, the, the bank goes out nice and slow. And then it kind of has like a bit of a drop where it drops into a deeper channel. If I'm fishing in that grass, it's no good, it's nil boy no. You know, the fish aren't going to see it. They go, sure, they're going to see the ground bait. They might catch the odd bit of free stuff out of the feeder. The chances of them finding your bait stuck in the middle of grass is very, very small. But past the grass, at the 50, at the 50 to 58 meter point, now I was, put, I was fit to put the two ounce lead to 70 meters and it felt like it was sticking in the bottom so it was like it was plugging in that tells me that there's like soft mud silt whilst soft mud and silt holds bloodworm and stuff like that and bream love bloodworm your feeders all day getting plugged in it it's a bit of a pain in the tits but at the 50 meters through to maybe 55 56 meters there was nice hard ground because as you were pulling the feeder back there was little, little, little taps. That tells me that it's like a, like a strip of like, like gravel. So you have grass, then a little strip of gravel, and then silt. I'm fishing in the little strip of gravel. If a cast is short, I'm bringing back. Everything's just covered in grass weed. So it's important when you're doing this type of fishing to find your location, clip up, measure up, and then hit that distance. It's so like I said before, as long as you're hitting the clip in the distance, if you're, if you're casting towards a marker, I always point out, have a marker on the far bank. I have a marker on the far bank. There's a dead tree. I'm casting to the dead tree. You're not going to be able to see it. I might take a photograph on my phone and try and zoom in on it. But anyway, I have a marker on the far bank where I'm putting my feeder to. If the wind pushes it off a little bit, it isn't a problem because I'm still in this hard area. So far, no fish, not even a bite, and it's been it's been about three quarters of an hour fishing. I'll keep going with the the bait up feeders, keep piling the bait in, and then I'll I'll drop down to a a smaller one, or I might even start putting stuff in with the the window feeders that's got like the holes in it. That way, as it's falling down, there's little bits of ground bait coming off mid water. So if there is fish cruising in the, in the upper layers, hopefully they're going to see this and follow it down. I don't really want to be putting tons of ground bait in the upper layers of water, especially with the wind ripping that way. You know, it's going to just rip out of your swim dead fast. So when you're using feeders like that there, it's... Uh, you 
kind of have to judge the elements. That was a knock. That was a bite. Woohoo! Come on, give me another bite. Uh, you've seen me fish here before with little Jake for pike. So there's there's territorial pike here, so we know there's pike here, we know there's other species. I just want to start catching them now. Magic. The boat that was there left and just uh, chucked this rubbish in the butter. Boat people, eh? The plan is working. We're starting to catch roach. This is good. It's not been, it's not been too bad today. I've had 47 roach. Only roach, no perch, no hybrids, no bream, no eels. Just roach, and they're all about that sort of size. Forty-seven. I've been fishing since I got here at nine o'clock, well, about ten past nine, and it is now twenty-five past two. I'm thinking of calling it time today and going home. Going home a bit earlier. I'll be honest, the the boats at the end of the dock that simply just fucking hoit their rubbish out the back of the boat and let it float away, that's irritated me. I did spend a bit of time with the feeder rod trying to cast the feeder on top of it to get it pulled in, but it was it was moving pretty quickly and I didn't hit it, didn't even manage to hit it. I don't understand this. You come to a, a place of natural beauty, you rent your stupid boat, and then you everywhere you go you leave it you leave rubbish and dirt everywhere. That's why I would have a problem with some of the uh, the boat people of the urn. Second one is boats are great for doing specific things. They are great. If you want to go on a family holiday, it's brilliant to come and take a boat out and see the world. Brilliant. And if you're a dog owner, it's even better. You know, you can take Fido or Elvis or whatever you call your dog with you. And you can have a, a really good time, you know. The dog likes it, the dog's getting out in the fresh air too. But being a dog owner, there's some responsibility there. There's some things that you have to do because you are a dog owner. Like, feed the dog. Dog will be hungry. Like, take dog to the vet if dog is sick. Because dogs will get sick, they need their injections, they need to be looked at by the vet. Those are the things responsible dog owners do. Responsible dog owners don't moor up in their big fancy boat throw the dog onto the jetty, you know, while Tarquin converses with Roger about the fine quality of the, uh, the shabbily. Let the dog take a shit on the dock and then pull it back into the boat and be off on your merry way to conquer the waves. That's not a responsible dog owner. So, I've had a rant about boats. I promised I wouldn't do it. I said I wouldn't do it. But here we go. Now of course, people that own boats, I guarantee you that 99% of them are perfectly normal good humans. But that 1%, oh Jesus. That 1% doesn't half give the rest of you a reputation for being arseholes. So, 47, 47 roach, and I think I might take a slow drive home. Let's get this uh, sorted out so that I can show you what we caught, and then we can take a, a drive home. I don't know if I'm going to get out tomorrow, 
Uh, I'm not going to get out on Wednesday because a good guy is coming to the house to do work for the house. But I've got plenty of bait that I'm going to go home and put in the fridge. Uh, on the way back through the skill, I might actually stop and get some get some worms because I've run out of worms. But apart from that, the world is good. So let me get this all tidied away and put back in the van, and I will show you the 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 net of roach. A few moments later. What gives? I hear you say. This is the part of the video where I usually hold up the keep net, empty the keep net into the landing net, show you this roach, all 47 of them. So I set up the GoPro on the tripod. Everything is good. I press button, GoPro makes noise. I hold up the fish in net. Everything is good. I even smile. Then I go to the jetty, empty the net into the water again. I go back to the GoPro to switch it off. Realising all I did was change it from video to mode to time lapse video. So I didn't actually get the end of all the fish in the net. That's disappointing. I realised today's video didn't exactly go according to plan. I also, looking back at it, realised that I could have done better with the boat throwing the litter. I should have got a... Well, I should have got a, a photograph of it so that I could have reported it to the warden or you know, whoever. But I didn't get that done either. I'm also kind of gutted that I, when I was casting my feeder rod at the bag of rubbish, I couldn't get it. You know, I didn't put it there. I tried to get rid of it. Didn't work. So... That annoyed me. I don't like people throwing litter and leaving a mess. You know, same as with the guys, you know, throwing their dog out to let it take a crap on the jetty and then just going away like it was the most normal thing in the world. Humans are strange. They definitely are strange. And sometimes they make you want to tear your hair out. But it's all good. Because I'm back at my house. And I'm going to have a nice glass of Jimson's whiskey. Might even, I might even be a hooligan and put some lime cordial and ginger into it and have a few cocktails just to lighten the mood. An interesting thing also happened on the way home from the fishing today. Where I was fishing to Enniskillens but 25 minutes drive so I, I left where I was, drove to Enniskillen everything was good, I checked in the shop got some worms, everything is cool I now have loads of bait in the house the maggots and the casters are in the fridge I vacuum packed them so that they're kept in the fridge they can stay fresh for a, up to a week uh, casters are really tricky to keep so you, you don't want to keep them in a vacuum pack bag any longer than about 7 days otherwise they're just not good maggots on the other hand, you can keep them you know, like that for seven days and they're perfectly fine. Before you go to fish with them the night before, just open the bag, put them in a bait tub, let them get the oxygen, and you know, when you go to fish the next day, they are as good as they were before you put them into the vacuum packer. You've seen me use the vacuum packer before. I'm not going to explain what the vacuum packer is or how to use it. You've seen it before. However, driving through at a skillin, I, I had a bit of a tightening in my guts. It was quite strange. It was the sort of tightening that signals alarm bells to the brain that goes, Oh no, I need to find a bathroom. In a skill in Tahoma, it's 28 miles. I'm not going to tell you how fast I managed to do in a skill in Tahoma, because there, I could be incriminating myself. Pulled into the drive of my house, leapt out of my car, well, I run to the front door, trying to get the keys in the door. I don't know if anyone else's body does this, or maybe it's just me, maybe it's just because I'm fucked up, but you kind of get to your house, you're marching in double quick time order to the bathroom, and your brain goes, ah, we're at the bathroom, 
And it sends like a little message through to like the nether regions to go, It's okay, nether regions. We're at the bathroom. Bombs away. And you're there going, Oh, fuck, I'm turtling. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. But Christ, the last 20 or so steps. I haven't moved that fast in a long time. I am planning to go back out again, probably towards the end of this week, and this should hopefully mean more content for the channel. I'm not going to go back to the lake I fished, the, where the five of us fished at the very start of this video. I'm not going to tell people where it is, please don't ask. It's it's a lake in the, in the south of Ireland where uh, Cecil found it, and it was the first time I fished it for coarse fish. I have fished it for pike in the past. And I might go back and fish it for pike this winter, now that we have no problem with access. But I'm not going to tell people where it is. I'm not going to put people onto it because it's not a big venue. I don't really want, you know, I'm going to be selfish. I'm not going to tell people where it is. I'm just not going to do it. On the urn, when I fish public access waters, I'll tell everybody where I fish on the urn. If you phone me up and say, I'm coming to Northern Ireland, I'm coming to the urn, where can you tell me can I fish? I'd happily rhyme off swims, locations, how to get there, because it's public water. You know, you pay your license fees, you can fish there. Your general public is what you can do. You know, some of my videos, I, I you know, I watch and everything. I say today the fishing was crap. You know, it was fucking awful. You know, so somebody says to me, I, I want to come and fish where you just fished, and you kind of think, well, are you mental? I had like six fish in five hours. Or I spent two days pike fishing and got nothing but a cold and wet feet. You know, I will tell people, help people out if I can. You know, as long as you're not taking the piss. Another small thing I have to raise. The last video I put up with the with the rain and all that sort of stuff, fishing with Cecil. I got some strange comments. I got some, like, you know, weird, unsurprised, you know, comments, you know, uh... The whole Northern Ireland sectarian thing, I, I'm not not like that. I, I don't do it. You know, I'm not in the Orange Order. I don't march on the streets. I don't play the flute or beat the drums. I'm, I'm an atheist. No, they, don't, they don't tend to let atheists into religious orders. I, I just want to kind of live life, get my fishing done and kind of live in peace. I don't think that's too much to ask. So there's some of the comments on the previous video I've now set up like on the YouTube, it's like a spam filter thing where you put in certain words and if certain words pop up, it's just comments sent away from me to approve. Um, so if you're writing a comment and it comes up with a box saying comments sent to be approved, maybe you put like one of those words that popped up in this in this restriction box that I've set up. If the comments just, you know, having a laugh, call me a fat cunt, then <laughs> fine, you know. I'll probably comment back and say, well, you know, well, whatever. <laughs> but if it's along the lines of, you know, this person versus this person and all that shit, no, I ain't letting that on the channel. So, until the next time, troops, tight lines, and I will see you again later.